probably my least enjoyable Bengals win in all of Bengals history. We've got uh, that game to talk about, of course, all the two aspects. We'll get you updated on that. Unique Ngakwe stops by the show ahead of Colts Titans on Sunday. Happy Friday. No undefeated teams in the AFC. Bengals win 27-15 over the Dolphins. The story, of course, is Tua. The latest, we know from Adam Schefter, five hours-ish ago here, as we, uh, we are in California uh, at uh, 8 a.m. local time. I think we have the tweet, don't we, from Schefter, saying that he traveled with the team. McDaniel said that his quarterback suffered a concussion and nothing more serious. The team said Tunga Bailoa flew back to Miami with the Dolphins. There are so many thoughts about this, and I, I enjoy that because I think it's a really a moment to be thoughtful about a process that might need to be reevaluated and, and further worked on uh, for, for progress. Now, this is, of course, coming from somebody who worked for the NFL for six years, someone who saw the technology, someone who saw the investment, the priority that it is for have, to have the game be as safe as it can be. But when you look at what happened Sunday, and that's what you have to do. You see what happened last night, and as a human, you look at what happened Sunday. And what did your eyes tell you? I felt weird about it on Sunday. I think you probably felt weird about it, too. It didn't sit well. It was just one of those things that didn't pass the eye test. And then, of course, last night we're all watching, and this happens. The bottom line is, and it's a simple point, it's not some take that's right, we have to protect these players. We have to understand the players want to play. It's not that hard. They're competitors. They only get to do this 17 times a year, a few more after that if they're lucky. This is something that they've worked on since they were kids. It has more gravitas. Every game, every minute, every snap has more meaning. They're out there playing for their money. They are going to want to play. Everything in the NFL is heightened. Everything has more meaning. That's why we love it. So because we love it and because we're invested in it, you, me, owners, sponsors, everyone, for, for whatever their agenda is, right? We don't, we don't have to get into why people are invested, why people should care about concussions, why people should care about you know, protecting these players. It doesn't matter. We all do, and we have to do a better job. And we have an opportunity here, I think, to collectively evaluate that and stop and take a little extra moment here to check in with that process. What can we do better? I don't have the answers. And I'm also not going to rush to judgment here because there's just too much flying around right now. I'm, I'm happy to what seems to be okay, at least okay enough to get home. I'm wishing him a, a, a quick recovery. I hope he's okay. And I hope everyone's asking questions. And that's what needs to happen here. Everyone needs to ask questions. It's the NFLPA's job to push the league on all of that, to investigate, to do everything, their due diligence. It's what they're there for. It is up to the media to push for answers, too, because we have to protect the players. This one should stick. Sometimes we collectively dig into something rightfully that deserves outrage, that deserves eyeballs, and there's too much going on and we move on from it. This one I really feel like needs to be sticky. It needs to be seen through. And that's on media. That's on me. That's on everybody out there. And everyone knows who they are. And, it, it, you know, it goes without saying, and it's not, it's like dumb to even say it, that, of course, if it is found through that process of asking questions and taking that moment collectively to reevaluate all of this, that he did have a concussion and the Dolphins mishandled it or had a hand in that, the most severe possible consequences should, of course, take course. We can never have this happen again. There's been so much done to prevent this. So much done to try to eliminate, to eradicate, to minimize this, to, to put player safety first. We shouldn't be in a place where we're even having to question it. The protocols have helped. I believe that. I believe that as working in the years, seeing the technology, talking to Dr. Alan Sills, talking to, you know, knowing what goes into it, a little, even just a little bit. I just saw a little bit of that. But this shows last night even if nothing happened, that we still have so much work to do because there simply shouldn't be questions. And now we just have to ask them. Uh, it's hard to go over to the Bengals side of this, and we have games to look forward to, of course. And we'll keep you updated, and we're all sending our very best to Tua and hoping that everything is okay. Uh, it's, I have to talk about the Bengals because they won the game. You can't sleep on them anymore. They're 2-2. Two and two. Uh, we're going to get through this kind of quickly. The O-line coming together. Burrow sacked once. Hallelujah. Only sacked, you know, once after three times over the last two games. Uh, Bengals defense, they stood tall. They stepped up. They haven't allowed 100 yards rushing to a team so far this season. 
Uh, Bengals, you know, two was out the majority of the game. But you can't tell me this wasn't a season-defining variety-type win, right? The offense made plays. T. Higgins stepped up. He is such a blessing. Bless you, T. Higgins. Chase a bit quiet. He did have that huge play to set up a touchdown, though, so we like to see that. They're... I hate to criticize them in a win, and I'm a huge Bengals backer, of course. They're still not clicking. They're not quite on all cylinders yet. There's not a lot of sustained offense after that first drive, right, if you're watching it. They need to keep building, and it's not a worry. It's just they need to do it quickly because the schedule gets brutal. At Ravens, at Saints, those are big tests, big offense tests, big defense tests. So Zach Taylor, I, I, I like you. I love you. You took the team to the Super Bowl last year. I'd like to see a little zest. I'd like to see a little spice. Spruce it up. Look alive out there. Ten days until the Ravens. So I'm looking for creativity from the Bengals side of things uh, as we look ahead here on Up and Adams. And I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? What do you think about Tua? Do I need to have a hotter take? Do I need to, you know, whatever everybody thinks. I need to know your thoughts at Up and Adams show. How did you feel with what you saw on Sunday? How does it relate to what you saw last night? What should happen going forward? Let's have a talk about it. Um, as you bring in some guests to talk about what's going on around the league. Yannick Ngakwe on the show today. We've got a lot of fun coming up, so don't miss that. And uh, we've got to bring in Catherine Fitzgerald, who covers uh, for the Buffalo News, the Buffalo Beat here. Oh, this is a great game. Are you kidding? Bills, Ravens, this is amazing. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, I'm super excited for this game, too. I think it's going to be such a fun matchup. Thank you for joining me yet again here on the show. So uh, Allen and the Bills, they racked up like 500 yards of offense last week. So it feels weird asking this question. What adjustments do they need to make to make sure they get a win over this Ravens squad? Because Lamar is no joke. Yeah, it was a weird game against the Dolphins where they had almost 500 yards on offense. They were effective in a lot of ways, but just couldn't score. They couldn't translate that into points. And I don't think that game is totally indicative of what this Bills offense is going to be, but... There were just some things where, you know, they had a 20 play, 92 yard drive. They got a field goal out of Um, things like that, where they just need to actually punch it in. They're capable of that. They were really banged up. It was a weird game from just who all was rotating in and out. But I think just solving that red zone efficiency, some more short yarded situations will really be big against the Ravens and what might also be a really messy weather game. Mm, weather. I always have to think about that. Yeah, raining in Baltimore. Great Con and Crow song. Now, the uh, the Bills have been riddled with injuries, especially in the secondary. I mean, both sides really have been on this in this matchup. So how concerning is that for Buffalo going up against a guy like this former MVP that wants to get paid who's lighting the world on fire, as predicted? Yeah, there's no good game to be banged up on defense, but I think this is a particularly tough one. Um, they're still waiting to see on a few guys. A lot of them are day to day. We just heard from um, Sean McDermott on the radio a little bit ago that Christian Benford will be out. That was expected. He had hand surgery this week and came back into that Dolphins game after breaking his hand on special teams, which, you know, just a testament to how thin they were across the roster. But still waiting to know for sure on Dane Jackson, who's been back at practice, which first and foremost, just so glad he's Doing yes. better after a really scary hit a few, um, you know, just like 10 or 11 days ago. He's been back doing really well. Jordan Poyer still TBD. So, yeah, there's a lot that still could determine what this defense will look like come Sunday. And you have a really nice piece in the Buffalo News to read about that, of course, and that, the brutal hit, of course. I'm glad to hear he's doing well. We appreciate you, Catherine Fitzgerald, Buffalo Bills beat writer for the Buffalo News. Big one between those Bills and those Ravens. With that one, you know, I just keep thinking about what Boomer said. And Boomer said, say, you know, potentially Saquon could get moved and that they would be interested in bringing him in. There's the Dable tie, of course. There's the fact that this is a... a, a a player who's playing really well. It looked like he could become a player of the year, and he could have success there. He could win a Super Bowl ring for himself there and for everyone, and then he can get paid. This is his last year, uh, and then he's a free agent. So I guess what I'm looking for in this game is, Bills, can you run? Do you need to make the move for Saquon? Like, are, is that going to gain some speed, some traction, those boomer words. Because once he said him, it went out there because it's, it's a star, it's a former quarterback, he's a New York guy. Like, it all makes sense. But is single, like is that run game effective against the Ravens? Can they get it going? Um, Bills are one of three teams to not have a single running back with more than 80 rushing yards yet this season. So always a question perennially with the run game and what they're doing. Uh, and it's something that seems to be more important 
as the weather gets worse. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's see. Up next, we've got Bill Belichick. Uh, I had this crazy. Um, do we have that? Do we have the Bill Belichick sound? Okay. Let's do that. Day by day, Phil. Day by day. That's the plan. Day by day. Day by day is getting better. See how it goes. Day by day. Does he have a high ankle sprain? Day by day. What do I look like? A doctor, an orthopedic surgeon? Like, I don't know. Talk to the medical experts. What are the medical experts on staff say? Day by day. I'm sort of wondering if that, and it's not, it's, charm's not the word, but like, is that wearing off up in New England with the losses? Like the, it's, it's an interesting question. That's Bill Belichick, of course. They've got a big one this weekend in, Lam in Green Bay at Lambeau. I'll be in the building, so let's bring in a guy who covers the New England Patriots side of things for WEEI in Boston day by day. You're covering it. Kyrie Thompson, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? As a matter of fact, he's in there right now. I'm at Gillette Stadium while he's uh, putting the charm on and doing yeah. his whole, uh, yeah, you know, if, will Mac Jones practice today? We'll see. Here's my question. And I'm, I just thought of this right now while listening to, because I was up there a long time, but they were winning Super Bowls every time, right? So it's like you're asking him the question. He's not giving you the direct answers. He doesn't want to tell you what's going on with Mac Jones, blah, 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 blah. On to the next one, do your job. And then you're, you're hosting a Lombardi. So everyone in the media up there is like, all right, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. But when you're not winning, when you're not successful, and he's not giving those answers still, is it a different experience? Well, I think it's still a little bit of, okay, we're used to it. And there's a little, okay, almost you have to, you have to laugh in a way. You, you huh. can't take it too seriously because, I mean, that's just what he's going to do. He's not going to change. And it's not necessarily contempt. It's just caginess. And I do think that that is a question, though, with the larger media and the fan base. Like, hey, you could get away with this when you weren't winning. But I think that when it comes to us in the room, we're just like, look, this is just what it is. Huh. Well, we have, you have a really nice disposition. I don't know if you belong covering the <laughs> New England Patriots in New England for WEEI. But whether it's uh, it's Mac, you know, the, tell me about the Mac Jones thing. Because, you know, I, I know Mac is saying, ask Bill. Bill's saying I'm not an orthopedic surgeon. So what is the latest? Is it Hoyer the Destroyer who can't get a win in the 11 games? Well, apparently that's the expectation, though there was a report that just came out this morning that Mac Jones is continuing to progress and get, uh, you know, respond strongly to treatment and that it could be a game time decision. And he's, he's obviously pushing very, very hard to play. And the pack and the Patriots are reportedly putting two game plans together for the Packers, one with Mac Jones and one with Brian Hoyer. At the same time, I spoke to an expert yesterday that, that talked about Jones's injury, the way the way that it looked, and really the prognosis of what that is when you have what's called a pretty severe high ankle sprain yeah. that he reportedly it's had. Tough. And and it's it's not one of those things you just come back from in a week. He said it would be a straight up miracle if Mac Jones played this week. So if you're a betting person, which you might be being on FanDuel TV, <laughs> I would say bet hey. on Brian Hoyer being the guy. Okay, but you know what? I don't know if it's Mac Jones or Brian Hoyer. If anybody who's a betting person is going to, I don't know, that either of them together on the field are going to beat the Packers. And the Packers still don't even have anybody to throw to, but I just think the Packers uh, are at home. There's a lot to like about them. I'm not telling betters what to do because I would never do that. But, but uh, to get into this matchup, how can the Patriots possibly take down this Green Bay squad? Well, they're probably going to look at the game plans from week one and two, where the Vikings had 126 yards on the ground. The Bears had 180 yards on the ground in week two. And they're probably going to look at Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson and say, saddle up. Let's go. We're riding you all the way through the finish line on this one. And I mean, that had mixed results in week two because... The Packers still beat the Bears, even though they rushed for 180 yards. But this is a situation where they're probably going to look at those games and say, we can win on the ground. They've they've been able to kind of find, you know, kind of rediscover their identity as yeah. a running football team over the first couple of weeks of the season. And I think when you got those two players, that that's right now the strength of your team is the running game. Brian Hoyer, I mean, he obviously knows the offense better than just about anybody out there. Okay. And so you so you're saying to yourself, okay, maybe you can at least not mess this up and we can control the ball and keep it away from Aaron Rodgers. That's really going to be the key. 
But I think when it comes down to it, I'm not expecting, you know, a 400 yard game from Brian Hoyer to shock everybody in this one. It's probably going to be ground and pound big time. But I would love to see it. And it might be ground and pound the other way, too, with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. So, I mean, this trend of low scoring games and defense can seem to continue uh, as we head into week four. It's kind of a rah, rah for me. Uh, Kyrie, it was really nice to meet you. Absolutely. Great to talk with you. Thank you. Wow, you are really, t- honestly, like, you're too nice to be working in New England. Not that anybody yeah, in New England right. is mad. But, like, Tom Curran's kind of a curmudgeon. Like, I guess Phil Perry over there at NBC Sports, he's yeah. really nice. Hey, but, Tom's my guy. Yeah, but you got to have a little more, like, you know, Boston radio in you. Come on. You're, like, so so yeah. lovely. Well, I'm from Chicago, so, I mean, that's the thing, Midwest, that, that whole Midwestern thing, I, I, I can't get rid of it. Uh, and that's why we hope the Packers lose, you and I. Kidding! All right, thank you so much, Kyrie. Talk to you in a bit. You can catch him on WEI uh, for Boston covering the Patriots there. The big game, of course, is one. I, I want to get excited for these games, but I don't. I just want them to be high scoring. Uh, Sunday night, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, they're in Tampa Bay, and the game is being played in Tampa Bay? Yeah, which is uh, the Buccaneers, of course. There's a lot of talk about that. Both quarterbacks unimpressive last week. So my quick thoughts on this one, it seems the marquee matchup is not them, it's the defenses. It's just the theme of the year, like I was just saying. Uh, So I hope we get fireworks, but I don't know. There's missing pieces on both sides. Mahomes got stymied by the Colts' defense. This is a much tougher defense than that. The Bucs, not a stretch to say they're the number one defense in the league. I think they are. They are. They are the number one scoring. They lead the league in takeaways. They have eight. They've got 11 sacks. That's third most in the league. And they have the fourth-ranked total defense. So this is going to be defensive performance. Chiefs, they need more takeaways, by the way. Spags has them playing well, and they always like make a play when they need to, but not takeaways. They only have two and three games, so I'd like to see that change. It's going to come down to defense, <sighs> which I don't love, especially when it comes to these two quarterbacks. But that said, speaking of the snoring, we're sleeping on both teams because this offense is going to get right it could happen on Sunday night. It's going to happen. One, one of these teams is going to just, you know, really start going off pretty soon. So let's not sleep on either the Chiefs or the Bucks. All right, we have to get out of here because we have uh, Yannick Ngakwe, who's probably not going to be happy that I'm kind of clowning on defense. And he had a really nice sack last week of Patrick Mahomes. So we'll get into all of that. We'll talk Raiders, too, with my boy Q! Oh, I just watched the Chiefs versus Buccaneers Sunday Night Football matchup this week when you can earn a share of $20,000 of cash prizes when you enter the Hut Hut Hulu instant free play this weekend on FanDuel. Check it out. All you have to do is enter the Pick'em contest. Uh, you answer 10 questions about Sunday night's game. Fans who answer the most questions correctly will win a share of $20,000 in cash prizes. Hut Hut Hulu. Visit FanDuel.com to enter. Do you like how I just, like, kind of trashed that game a little bit. Not that I trashed it. And maybe it'll, it'll, I like undersell over deliver. I'm sick of the movie posters of like Brady, Rogers, Eli Apple, Tyreek. Like it's at, under, undersell over deliver. And maybe that'll be our Sunday night matchup between the goat and the young goat. Uh, let's head out to Vegas right now. We're going to bring in your boy Q, uh, Raider Nation radio host, podcast host, you do it all. Your boy Q, I feel like we're friends on Twitter. You know I'm a big fan. You know I listen to your stuff, but I don't. I feel like we can't really get to know each other until I know your real name, and I'm sure it's not your boy Q. No, no, it's not, and my mom would be very proud that you actually asked, and thanks for having <laughs> me on the show. I appreciate it, but it's, it's Keont. It's spelled Q-I-A-N-T, so Keont. 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 Yeah, like your key and your aunt, so Keont. But you're just your boy Q in everything. You never say that. Right. Well, because it's so hard to explain sometimes. So it's like anyone who has a name that starts with a Q, it always ends up getting dumbed down to just the letter Q. And so my mom who spent a lot of time trying to work on my name and be creative is kind of upset that I dumbed it down to one letter. But no. here we are. Oh, well, hi, mom. <laughs> Good morning. Hopefully you're watching and I'm glad you're proud. You should be proud of him because he does excellent work and has great energy. Uh, listen, I did my research because I'm so great. And I looked at Vegas and it's a high of 98 today out there in the desert. What's the temperature of the Raiders fan? base right now wow if it's 98 uh, outside it's about 198 with the fan base they are so angry right now raider nation is is fired up and and upset you know because of the 0-3 start and why wouldn't you be you know you go to the playoffs the year before and then you go out and make a move for Devontae adams chandler jones you bring in josh mcdaniels as the head coach who's been to the playoffs and super bowl so many times with the patriots and then you start out 0-3 so the fan base is fired up they're angry the sky is falling but you know everything changes with the win and so they need to really win 
starting this Sunday. They do, and then you show up to the stadium, and the bottle service is a billion dollars and everything. You know, like, right. you're just like, yeah, a couple wins. We got to get a couple wins. You got Devonta Adams, that whole drama. Right. So, listen, they hired Josh McDaniels as head coach. We know he's a genius play caller. You can't argue that. And then we know Devontae Adams comes in, and we know objectively he's one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League. He has 189 receiving yards, the fewest through three games since 2016. Why isn't it working? Be specific for me, your boy Q, Keont. And <laughs> how do they turn it around against Denver? You know, I just think they're still filling out the process, right? I just don't think that they're on the same page yet. I mean, we all heard the story about Derek Carr and Devontae Adams at Fresno State, but this isn't Fresno State. This is now the National Football League, and they haven't played together in a very long time. So I think they're still trying to work out the kinks and get on the same page. And I also believe they're still trying to learn Josh McDaniel's system. So you combine all that through three tough games, and, and you just – you have a lot of inconsistencies. Devontae caught a lot of passes week one, right? I mean, he had 10 mm -hmm. catches on 17 targets, and everyone thought he's trying to target him too much. And then the next week, he only had two catches. So what's the rhyme or reason? What's the middle even? There's really not one just mm. yet. Uh, Denver this week, division rival. This team yes. has Max Crosby, this Raiders squad. I love Chandler Jones. You have Chandler Jones. How many sacks do you have? Zero. Two, I zero think. for Chandler no, Jones. You have two. two for Max Crosby. Oh, yeah. Well, two for Max Crosby, right. but zero for Chandler Jones, right? Two so between that's... both of them. What right. is going on? Here's here's my worry. Don't be that team that lets Russell Wilson cook. Don't be that right. first team that lets Russell right. Wilson have a great game. What is happening with the Raiders defense? The Raiders defense just hasn't started clicking yet. I mean, they and it's it's really it's, it's a tale of two halves. They'll play really well in one half, and then the second half they won't. In some games it's the first half, some games it's the second half, and so they haven't got that consistency yet. And that's really been with the whole team. But Chandler Jones, they've asked him to play a little bit different style of defense, not really pin his ear back and get to the quarterback. But hey, you know Chandler Jones gets to the quarterback, so yeah. for him to go three games and not have any sacks is a it's a pretty big disappointment. Max Crosby's fantastic, but still he only has two. He needs a little bit help on the other side yeah it seems like you're preaching we're preaching patience which i think is interesting because everyone's full pa i mean somebody has to have the worst record somebody has right. to be last it happens to be the raiders they happen to be in a tough division but it seems like you think things might turn around because you're saying for now for right now it's like this you think this right. will get better for the raiders and they might not end up in the bottom of the afc west I feel like they have an opportunity because they have so much talent, right? I mean, I almost feel like you have so much talent that you have to be better. Uh, and if they're not, you know, they've already had a players only meeting, which to me is kind of a red flag after three weeks. It's a little concerning because you can't keep going back to that. Well, so now we'll see this yeah. week how that turns around. You Browns, know, see if they Browns had one after two weeks and got a win the next time that the day after. Right. So maybe it works. My, my concern is when you have a players only meeting, what does it say about Josh McDaniels? Right, exactly. And I think that they are still trying to get used to who Josh McDaniels is as a head coach. You know, he's a really good play caller, I believe. And even his play calling has been inconsistent, in my opinion, right? It hasn't been exactly what I thought it was going to be leading into the season. So I think there's a lot of inconsistencies from the top down when it comes to this team. And so they, they're they just trying to get that first W. It's like getting that first basket, right? You just need to see it go through the hoop once. And then once you do it, yeah. then maybe you can get some more. Q, you must have seen me playing Papa Shot with Shaquille Leonard. But I, <laughs> I don't, I, I, my basket goes in first all the time. Like, don't there you even, go. That's, know, that's all that matters. Who are you talking to? Uh, <laughs> we, lucky for you and for the fan base that you cover, whose temperature is so scalding hot these days, yes. the Broncos have the same ish going on. Like they... Who's, yep. Whose offense can get hot? Who can shoot a basket first? Like who? That's what it is between you and the Broncos. Who's to blame for the offensive issues is my big question right. for the Raiders. Who's to blame for the defensive issues? And there's a guy who wears a visor who didn't have a lot of success in Denver, now in a bit of a right. revenge game, back going up against Denver, uh, who I'm looking at, and hopefully he can turn things around. As not just you guys are trying to figure out and the players are trying to figure out what kind of head coach he is. When you come from that Belichick tree, Mm -hmm. You have to figure out what kind of coach you are to separate yourself from that. We have not seen much success from that tree in the National Football League as far as head coaching is concerned. So he's, I'm looking forward to it, and you can only go one way, one way now. <laughs> That's right. That That's way. right. I mean, they haven't won a game yet, so it, it can only get better, right? And so, I mean, the one thing that I think the saving grace for Raider Nation is that AFC West is not as strong and as much of a juggernaut as we thought it was going to yeah. be heading into the season. Yeah. The Broncos have struggled, and the Chargers are all banged up, so. It's, it's still kind of a tight, tight it's bunch. Huge. It's true. Fewest touchdowns in the NFL this season. Need to get a win. We appreciate you, Q, and we will ha hopefully have you back soon. So, Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Q. We appreciate it. Uh, we, I believe, are, are we going to Yannick? All right, let's do it. So I uh, sat down with Yannick Ngakwe, and he was with me uh, with the Colts last week at the Kicking the Stigma event. He was one of the first people to show up.
he's sitting there, standing, playing games, and this is just how, how I view him. If he was a Jag, of course he traveled around the league a little bit, and then he has this, uh, this nice sack we have to get into. We sat down and just talked about what this Colts team has and whether or not they can turn it around. Take a listen. <gasps> Hello, sir. How are you doing? I'm, I don't know. We're not going to have that kind of energy. You don't want to be. Yeah, yeah. It's yes, a new week, okay? It's a new week, okay? Oh, we're going to downplay it? That's what we're nah, doing? No, nah. no. We can't, we can't be too excited. It's like, it's a week-to-week -week thing, you know? I think you should got, you guys should go swing from chandeliers at the local club, a restaurant, and just have the time of your lives. No? I feel you. I feel you. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, let's just look at the, I looked at the stat lines here. Mm-hmm. 58 rushing yards mm, 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 for those Chiefs. Zero rushing yards for Clyde edwards alaire What did I tell you when I saw you in Indy? You said, you know, that this could be a game that we definitely should win, and you spoke it to existence, so. I said, stop the run, win the game. And you said, well, Gus Bradley stops the run. You've been with him a long time, right? Jags, Raiders, Colts now. What works so well between you and he? Yeah, he's just a genuine guy. Um, he's I've seen him, like you said, prior teams, you know, with the Raiders, now with the Colts and, and Jacksonville, and I've seen the ups and downs, and I've seen how he's reacted to adversity, and he's a, you know, a stand-up guy, and a lot of people, you know, they tend to, uh, to flock to that, so he's somebody that I said is like, he's a genuine guy and a person that you want to, you know, make plays for. Uh, you also had a sack in this game. You sacked Mahomes, and that should be celebrated, even though you're not going to want to because you're being, you know, a, a great veteran player about it, whatever. You're not being very fun about it, but we're going to celebrate this because you've sacked him three <laughs> times now. Uh, what what does it take to bring him down? Uh, he's a guy, you know, that's a, a special player. Uh, he hitches the ball, you know, with certain coverages. So you got to just continue to have second effort rushes uh, straining to get to the ball. You know, you actually didn't call that. You didn't call me getting the sack. You know? I did not. No, I just, I but you had to you had to stunt for me. You had to be like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll stop the run. We'll give Clyde Edward zero yards, and I'm gonna take this guy down. And didn't you do something to him on the next play too? I was like, oh. Yeah, I was. You know, that was you know, rushing cover go together. The DBs had a great coverage on that play, and I was able to get back there and hit him one more time. So it's not like it's new to you to sack players. You've had 56 and a half sacks in your career. If you had to power rank your sacks in terms of satisfaction like the most satisfying to you what's number one uh my first play ever in the nfl was a sack it was versus uh it was a preseason game i was in jacksonville versus the new york jets in new york and my first play ever in the nfl was a sack so that was like my who'd you take down uh what's his uh fitzpatrick fitzpatrick <laughs> you taking down ryan Fitt you taking down Ryan Fitzpatrick in a meaningless preseason game is your favorite one? Why? I mean, because it was my first uh, play as a pro, my first snap ever. You know, that's, that's I feel like that was special for my first play to be a sack in the NFL. I think it wasn't even a real game. Honestly, it's, <laughs> it's it, was, but it was satisfying to you. Now, yeah. he's a big boy. He's like, he's a tough guy. He was all right. <laughs> I love that. Why are you called the patron saint of Indianapolis? Uh, I, I guess because I'm giving back, you know. I'm just using this platform that God has blessed me with to just give back to people coming from similar backgrounds as myself. What What have you done there so far? It's your first year in Indy. Yeah, absolutely. We've helped over uh, 40 teachers so far, just getting some school supplies for kids and Title I schools. And uh, that's just basically uh, schools that don't have as much resources as, you know, certain other schools in the area of Indiana. Um, also, we've uh, gave back, did some back to school shopping, you know, the first week before school started, took some kids from the Cor Corbin Safe Haven place, uh, a, a place that's founded for kids going through like domestic violence and, you know, uh, just kids going through a lot of different different situations. And we just took them back to school shopping. So that was a blessing. And, you know, many little things. I'm just trying to, you know, touch the community as much as I can. And somehow you're doing this. You're, you know, doing well on the field now. You're dealing with a back injury that, you know, everybody's got you feeling better about now. And you somehow still get to show up like this. You somehow <laughs> manage, you somehow manage these fit, these looks. Uh, who's putting these, to, look at that one. Who's putting these together for you? I style myself and I'm not no, even, I, don't. I, say I, don't that with, I say that with all humility. I say that with all humility. You really do? No, we were having a, me and my producer, Marissa McBride here, we're like, there's no way he styles himself. And you really do? What's the process? 
the process. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, I would say like Thursday or like sometimes on Wednesday, I would just go through the closet and just kind of see like what goes with what. And I like to pick out like two outfits. So one for the plane when we're taking off to an opponent and then uh, a new outfit for that game day. I don't want to, you know, use the same, you know, look, so. Uh, what is your Jimmy John's order? Because I just noticed. <laughs> turkey, turkey, turkey. A little bit of cheese, a little bit of cheese. What kind of cheese? Give me the, give me the specific Pro, order. Hi, Pro this Malone. is Jimmy John's. How can I help you? <laughs> Let me get uh, turkey light cheese with provolone. Provolone turkey cheese. Turkey light cheese with provolone. I mean, this is, this is an ad. This went. It could go great win over the Chiefs. They were all rested. Everybody's talking about them. We won. The word you use is joy. That's fine. Are we building on this? Is that the mood in the locker room? How did the win change the team? Uh, I would say the win changed the team. Uh, like I said, uh, that was considerably like the, the best opponent. Um, honestly, that we'll that we'll see uh, with Mahomes. You know, he's he's a dangerous quarterback. So um, we just took that win with confidence and the understanding. If we can come together on all three phases, those are the kind of results that we can get. So we just need to continue to uh, have that same mindset with preparation, practice uh, that we're about to have in a few moments, and uh, also just the film study. And then on Sundays, everybody just needs to show up and everybody needs to know they have to do their job. Everyone has to win their individual battle within a game. Now, do you have an outfit you pick up for practice too, or? <laughs> no, 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 no. No outfits for practice, no, no, no. <laughs> Last one for you. I know you've got a lot on your mind and a lot to get to. Uh, it's a familiar division rival. First time with the Colts, but of course, you know the Titans team uh, in and out and very well. What are you looking for in this matchup? Like, what are you really focused on specifically this week? You know, Derek Henry's a good back. Uh, he has great yards after the run, you know, falling forward. So let's just see how physical we can be. And um, let's step up our game as well as uh, getting to the quarterback, affecting uh, Ryan Tannehill. And also, like I said, just putting all three faces together, offense running the ball, uh, making touchdowns and special teams, giving us good field position. Yeah, Derek Henry and Ruck Tannehill are not happy that your back feels good. I'm telling you that right, that right yeah. now. And next it's time great. you win and next time we talk, I'd like you to, you know, I don't need you to have a bottle of champagne or anything with you, but we got to celebrate the fact that you're getting these wins. It's not an easy thing to win an NFL game. It's just you're right. You're right. So we'll celebrate it. next time. Pop yeah. some we'll bottles. Get some Jimmy John's. There we go. <laughs> you're the <laughs> best. Thanks for the time, Yannick. You're the best. I mean, you're welcome for your Jimmy John sponsorship that I just got you, Yannick. I appreciate you, but you deserve it because you do so much good for the league and for that team. Well, what a locker room, DeForest Buckner. You have Yannick Ngakwe. He loves Gus Bradley. I loved hearing him talk about him and how they've traveled together and worked so well together. Uh, and they got a big one, a divisional matchup, one that he's super familiar with, one that he beat, you know, beat to get to the AFC Championship game when he was a young Jaguar. Now he's, of course, Jaguar, a Jaguar, Jaguar, Jaguar. Can I have that Miller Light now? Can we have the beer? Can we do the Friday beer, please? Control room. I, I walk in here and I go, can I have my Friday beer, please? And they're holding me up. Uh, we've got DFS coming up next. Hey, Sam Monson from PFF. Want to know what is PFF'd up? We'll tell you. But seriously, it's PFF'd up that I can't have a beer. That's the problem. All right, right back. Let's go. To celebrate the start of the football season, FanDuel Casino hosting a Friday casino happy hour. Take a look. All you have to do is log on to the FanDuel Casino app tonight from 7 to 8 Eastern. Standard time, <laughs> just in case. Uh, to get the special offer, don't miss out. Download this FanDuel Casino app and get tonight's Friday happy hour free bonus. Okay, it's happy hour. Time for some DFES. Okay, that it's the, the read said happy hour. Can I? Can I? Can I have my beer? Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Speaking of yes, how was from DF? Yes for you. Gino Smith, you saw that, that uh, sound going to break last time. And you're like, what the heck is that? Well, it was because of this. So I like him and I like Tyler Lockett too. So the Lions have the league's worst scoring defense, giving up 31 points per game this year. Gino has the league's highest completion percentage this season. And Tyler Lockett is to, was targeted 22 times in the last two games. Why do we forget about Tyler Lockett? So disrespectful. He's incredible. 18 catches over the last two games. Uh, another wide receiver for you for DF. Yes, Deontay Johnson targeted on 33% of Trubisky's pass attempts this season. Sixth highest rate in the league. Both Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins had over 90 receiving yards against the Jets last week. So this one just makes sense at that price point. Now let's talk about one running back because I love you. And it's uh, DF. Yes to James Robinson, everybody. He's the only player in the NFL with a rushing touchdown in each of the first three games this season. 100 yards to rushing yards against the Chargers last week. We love it. Let's take a look at our DF Yes players. Geno Smith and Tyler Lockett. That's what the people in the business call a stack. 
And the stock falls too because it's great value. And I think that they connect. Deontay Johnson and James Robinson, you are welcome. <sighs> this job is so hard. Uh, let's bring in. Oh, this is going to be very fun. I love fantasy and I love numbers. And I'm not good at math, and so I don't crunch those numbers by myself. Instead, I rely on people like the NFL podcast on PFF's lead analyst for the NFL, Sam Monson, to do that. Sam, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Sam, I'm great, thank you for asking. It's Friday, happy Friday to you. Big slate on Sunday. So I love PFF, and sometimes when I'm there at the website, pff.com, or on the app, I know you guys have an app, which is amazing, I come across a number uh, that makes me say, well, that's, that's, that's PFF'd up. So it's, that's what we're gonna play here with you right now. So uh, I think you have some of those numbers for me. I have the actual number, but I don't know what it means. So first up, 56. 56 is the total number of pressures that the New York Jets offensive line has given up this season, which is the most in the NFL. It's the most in the NFL, despite Cincinnati having played an extra game with a bad offensive line. And everybody's looking ahead to, you know, Zach Wilson potentially returning, getting a start. This is a bad situation for him to be coming back to given how bad that offensive line is with all the injuries they've been hit with. But th those young rookies looked pretty good, though, even without him. Isn't there some bright spot for the Jets? That's how I saw it. No, there is. He's got receivers, and he's got better receivers than he had this time last year. But that offensive line is a concern for a player that, in his rookie season, you know, displayed problems with holding onto the ball too long, with dealing with pressure badly. It's just a situation that feels like it's going to be a rough outing for him if he does yeah. come back, and even with those receivers. Okay, next number is 78.7. I think that's the amount of beer I will drink, <laughs> amount of Miller Lights I will drink in the stands at Lambeau this weekend, but what is it to you? Nobody told me there was drinking involved in this segment. I, I, I that, call that for it. It happens. Changed everything. Um, that's Jacoby Brissett's PFF grade through three weeks, which is a top five bigger in the NFL. We had a rough game from Jacoby week one, then he was really quite good in week two, except the bad turnover right at the end that basically cost him the game. And then week three against Pittsburgh, he was almost flawless. He really didn't miss a throw in that game. Um, and his numbers should have been a little bit better than they actually were. You know, the, the deep throw to Amari Cooper where Amari stepped out of bounds, that's one that kind of should have been credited to, to Jacoby Brissett and would have made his stats look an awful lot better. But all of a sudden, it was all sort of doom and gloom around Cleveland. Jacoby Brissett might actually be able to steer the ship for 11 weeks. Mm, that would be a fun. I would like that rewrite for him. He's traveled. You know, he's a good quarterback. Teams love him, of course. He runs in the end zone when he scores. How about the number 19? I'm going to guess that is my producer, Conrad, how many times he will be swiping left and right this weekend on some sort of dating app. <laughs> 19 is the He's number of pressures that Micah Parsons has. Leads the NFL in pressures. Micah Parsons this year has become the best pass He's rusher insane. in the NFL. He's nuts. It's absolutely crazy how good he is right now. Uh, okay, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's, he's and what he allows DeMarcus, uh, DeMarcus uh, Lawrence to do. What he, he had three, you know, he had his sacks. He finally ate, and it's all because, of course, what Micah Parsons does on every play out there. He's a, a destructicon. Uh, okay, big number here. What could this be? 297. That is the total number of passing yards that Justin Fields has, not in one game, but in three games to start this season. Okay, one of them was in a monsoon, it was in a rainstorm, and he's got a ton of rushing yardage as well. You know, we have to credit him for that, but this is a historical level of lack of passing production. And people will say, yeah, but the Bears are two and one. They are, but, you know, one rainstorm game, one game against the Texans, they're 25th in yards per play, they're 26th in successful play rate, and they're running an offense that just doesn't, you know, bear any resemblance to the way football is run by everybody else in 2022. Yeah, okay, these are insane numbers. We'll hear more of those, of course, from you on your podcast over at PFF. And everybody, Chris Collinsworth hopped on and talked about this. Download the PFF app, uh, and you can get all of your numbers and all of your information. It'll help you in places like FanDuel or Fantasy Football or whatever you want. Sam, we really appreciate it. Next time, bring a beer. I will, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you, Sam Monson over at PFF, getting PFF'd up, which, which calls for a beer, I'm just saying. Miller, what? Miller, Wisconsin, it all makes sense. Brewers, I think, have a big game tonight. We'll be back right here on Up and Adams. <sighs> NFL players, owners, 
coaches. Hall of Fame. So many Hall of Famers. Fans. I'm going to say, this isn't just that. Fans, too. Fans, uh, media people. You get away with everything. You all think you're above reproach. No, no one's going to catch me. No, no one's going to see what I'm doing. Well, guess what? Up in Adams and myself, we're here to tell you we're on to you. The jig is up. Chris Long. Chris Long and his water boys giving access to clean water. Greg Olson raising millions, dedicating so much of his time for congenital heart disease. What the Mannings do, what Brady, all these people. Uh, the nerve. I'm going to say the nerve. The nerve of these players out there running around doing good. And let me tell you. Brandon Copeland, he's one of the worst. He has hosted golf tournaments for the underprivileged. He's created holiday shopping spree programs for single moms. This man, an undrafted guy, is holding football camps across the country. And he thinks no one's going to talk about it. He thinks no, no one's going to notice. He signs with the Ravens last week, and he's already up to good. Hey, Brandon Copeland. Gotcha. What are you working on lately as a Raven? Yeah, so right now, September is National Hunger uh, Awareness Month. And so we are trying to help fight food insecurity in Baltimore. You know, there's a, um, obviously, it's sad to think about there's kids going to sleep at night and, you know, their stomachs are growling. And, you know, it's easy for us to forget about it. Honestly, I was wanting to do this segment and you were the first person I thought of. And I told the guys, let me see what Brandon's got going on on Twitter and you're tweeting about food scarcity. How, like, how do you, where are you getting your information? Where are the donations going? Yeah, yeah. So uh, th literally this thing started from, you know, a, a fan, um, Blake Ramey. He tweeted that, you know, hey, if Brandon Copeland gets a sack, I'll shave my head bald. And, you know, <laughs> I, I hadn't seen it at all or anything like that. But after the game, I started getting a lot of buzzes on my phone and I saw it and I'm like, listen, I mean, you know, you're 10, undrafted free agent. I, I want to see you shave your head bald as well, too, right? Like, go ahead and eat those words a little bit. Growing up here, you know, in Baltimore, you know, for those who don't know, I, I signed with the Baltimore Ravens last week. Uh, that is my hometown team. That is where I grew up. I grew up watching Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, and I grew up dreaming of being in this jersey. I grew up dreaming of having a sack on Sunday in this jersey and having my city cheer for me. And so um, to do that, and to have that experience, but now be able to, how do we take that experience and have a ripple effect where we can actually help somebody else? And so, um, you know, we, we reached out to Blake. Um, he's been such a great sport about it. And now we're trying to, again, get the community involved. So the money that we're raising here, people are donating from the community, which is awesome. I'm matching up to 10 grand uh, in Baltimore. That. It's your money, your yeah. own money, your hard earned, undrafted m money. <laughs> yeah. you, I know yes, you count your dollars. You're the best with money. Yes. That you give me financial <laughs> It is so commendable. It is so inspiring and amazing. And I want you to know, we see it. We want to, sh we caught you. You thought you could get away with it, <laughs> Brandon, but you did it. We caught you. Uh, but don't think we're going to let you go without talking about the actual sack, because that, that was insane. <laughs> Talk me through it. Was it like a surreal experience? Yeah. Yeah, I will admit it, it was, um, That's awesome. it was one of those things where, you know, it was fourth quarter, especially, I mean, it's a big drive. You know, the team needs you, the city needs you um, to show up big in that regard. And Calais Campbell and the entire D-line did a great job of pressuring Mac Jones that entire time. Mac stepped up and I, the entire time I'm hoping, like, please just don't throw it away. Please just don't throw it away. Right. Um, and he, you know, came down with the sack and everybody's kind of getting on me. I should have done a celebration or something, but I was more of in a in a zone of like, we got to win. We have to win. Right. Um, and so, you know, yeah, the sack was amazing. My wife, Taylor, my two sons were there. And, and like when I tell you, I, I grew up dreaming about my sons being able to watch me play or my kids being able to watch me play. Again, I just checked that off the list. And again, now it's on to the next one. So again, literal, literal dream come true. Um, and now it's, you know, how do we get the next task accomplished? No one deserves it more. Cope, thanks for your time. 
Brandon Copeland, we caught you. Shout out to you. Thank you for all the work that you do for the community. You are such a star. And if you are interested in helping uh, and you want to get caught also, www.healthreformbeyondbasics.org. I don't know how my producers do it because I have the best team in the business, Marissa McBride, sitting right here to do such good work on this. But the Wizards figured out how to do this camera thing where you can help donate. QR code. Yeah, sure. Uh, on the screen. And it'll be on my Twitter feed, of course. Uh, and if you are out there, in the NFL world, and you catch someone doing something good, they can't get away with it. Hit us up at Up and Adams, and we will take a look. Up next, we've got a big slate of games on Sunday. I'm going to Green Bay right after this. I'm so excited. But there's a couple players I think might be in the end zone, and I sucked at this last week, so we're going to make it better this week. Because I love you, three guys that will score touchdowns in week three. Waddle, he has threes going up against Buffalo. We know the health issues there. T. Higgins going up against the Jets. And Michael Pittman, I was in Indy. Matt Ryan, two Pittman in week three against the Chiefs. Let's go. Good luck. I'm looking awfully L.A. there. It's grossing me out. That was me last Sunday. Wom, wom, wom. Woof. Uh, if I could punch myself in the face, I would. I hated that I was over in this. T. Higgins, though! T. Higgins, I want to do right by you guys, so I'm trying to make it better, and I'm going to tell you three guys I think will get in the old end zone this week. Uh, they want me to make guarantees. I'm not doing that, but these are my K makers. I think Mike Evans scores a touchdown. This isn't like some, you know, huge whatever, but he did score week one. He should be well-rested. He had his one-game suspension. He's thought about things. And he should be doing that uh, this week. How about Romeo Dobbs? Romeo Dobbs scored his first touchdown of the season last week. Eight targets, got the ball. Rookies don't get love from Aaron Rodgers. I'm drinking Wisconsin beer. I'll be in Wisconsin. Romeo Dobbs, let's go! He'll score a touchdown this week. I almost guarantee it, but I won't because that's awful. And Stephon Diggs leads the league with four this season. I don't see why that would not continue this week against the Ravens and that secondary. With that secondary, that would be our first high-scoring game of the year, like really a whopper high-scoring game. So these are my K-makers who scores a touchdown. I think Mike Evans does against the Chiefs. Romeo Dobbs up against the Patriots with Brian Hoyer, the Destroyer. Oh. And then, who's the last one I have? Stefan Diggs, yeah. Oh, of course, you, of course. Yes. Of course, Brian Bard, my Bills guy. Hey, cheers. If you're at Lambeau this weekend, call me. Bye. And thanks to my freaking team. You guys are the best.